renewable sources of energy too. Alternative resources such as biomass, geothermal and hydrogen are source of vast energy resources. These energy sources are renewable because they are regenerated within a reasonable time period. Moreover these energy resources can be used with minimal environmental degradation and offer us a chance to develop a truly sustainable energy policy. It's for these reasons there is growing interest in renewable energy resources. This lesson deals with these renewable energy resources. 1. Biomass. Energy from biomass is the oldest fuel used by humans. Our ancestors burned wood to keep the cave warm. Biomass is a renewable energy resource derived from plants and animal waste. The energy from biomass biomass conversion is released on burning or breaking the chemical bonds of organic molecules formed during photosynthesis. Thus, biomass represents an indirect form of solar energy. Biomass fuels can be used directly, or they can be transformed into more convenient form and then used more than one million people in the world still use wood as primary source of energy for cooking. Sources of biomass. It is derived from numerous sources, including the byproducts from the timber industry, agricultural crops and their byproducts, raw material from the forest, major parts of household waste and wood, solid biomass fuels wood logs and pellet, charcoal, agricultural waste stalks and other plant debris, timbering waste branches, treetops and wood chips, animal waste dung, aquatic plants kelp and water hyacinths, urban waste paper, cardboard and other combustible materials, gaseous biofuels liquid biofuels, Synthetic natural gas biogas ethanol, methanol, wood gas gas oho, biodiesel, methane and 70%, CO2-30%. Biomass can be burnt directly as a source for cooking, heating, lighting, generating steam, for industrial use for producing electricity can be used to generate gaseous fuels gasification can be converted into alcohol liquid biofuels by distillation methane and biogas can be produced from urban wastes in landfills and sewage at wastewater treatment plants in some facilities manure from livestock and other Organic waste is converted by microorganisms in specially designed digestion chamber to form methane CH4, which is burned to produce electricity, used in fuel cell, or used as fuel for vehicles. Molasses obtained from sugar cane is fermented to produce ethanol that can be used in automobiles. Uses of biomass. Traditional use of biomass is more than its use in modern application. In the developed world biomass is once again becoming important for applications such as combined heat and power generation. In addition, biomass energy is gaining significance as a source of clean heat for domestic heating and community heating applications. In fact, in countries like Finland, USA and Sweden use of biomass energy is increasing biomass fuels used in India account for about one third of the total fuel used in the country and it amount to 90% of the rural
households. Instead of burning loose biomass directly, it is more practical to compress it into briquettes compressing them into blocks of a chosen shape. Improve its utility and convenience of use. Such biomass in the biomass. Briquettes can be used as fuel in place of coal in traditional coolers and furnaces or in a gasifier. A gasifier converts solid fuels into a more convenient to use gaseous fuel called producer gas. Advantages of biomass energy. Burning of biomass does not increase atmospheric carbon dioxide because to begin with, Biomass was formed by atmospheric carbon dioxide and the same amount of carbon dioxide is released on burning. Biomass is an important source of energy in the most important fuel worldwide after coal, oil and natural gas. Biomass is renewable and free from net CO2 carbon dioxide emissions and is abundantly available on the earth in the form of firewood, agricultural residues, cattle dung, city garbage etc. Bioenergy, in the form of biogas, which is derived from biomass, is expected to become one of the key energy resources for global sustainable development. But gas as beer fuel. Indian sugar mills are rapidly turning to bagasa, the leftover of cane after it is crushed. And its juice extracted, to generate electricity. This is mainly being done to clean up the environment, cut down power costs and earn additional revenue. According to current estimates, about 3,500 MW of power can be generated from Bagasa in the existing 430 sugar mills in the country. Around 270 MW of power has already been commissioned. And more is under construction. Biogas plant. The biogas plant consists of two components a digester or fermentation tank and a gas holder. The digester is a cube shaped or cylindrical waterproof container with an Inlet into which the fermentable mixture is introduced in the form of liquid slurry. The gas holder is normally an airproof steel container that, by floating like a ball on the fermentation mix, cuts off air to the digester and aerobiosis and collects the gas generated. In one of the most widely used designs, the gas holder is equipped with a gas outlet, while the digester is provided with an overflow pipe to lead the sludge out into a drainage pit. Any biodegradable that which can be decomposed by bacteria substance can be fermented anaerobically in absence of oxygen by methane producing methanogenic bacteria. Cowden or feces are collected and put in a biogas digester or fermenter a large vessel in which fermentation can take place. A series of chemical reactions occur. In the presence of methanogenic bacteria CH4 generating bacteria leading to the production of CH4 and CO2. Methanogenesis is a microbial process involving many complex and differently interacting species, but most notably, the methane-producing bacteria, the biogas. Process consists of three stages, hydrolysis, acidification, and methane formation. 
potential of yogas in India. In India, the dissemination of large and dash scale biogas plants has begun in the mid 70s. And the process has become consolidated with the establishment of the national project. On biogas development NPBD in 1981, against the estimated potential of 12 million biogas plants, 2.9 million family type and 2,700 community institution land. Night soil based plants have been set up till December 1999. This is estimated to have helped in a saving of 3 million tons of fuel wood per year and manure containing nitrogen equivalent to 0.7 million tons of urea. However, in terms of total dung that is available in the country, the potential is much more. The bovine population in India is 260 millions. As an adult, bovine produces an average of 10 kilograms of dung per day. If it is assumed that 75% of the dung is collected, nearly 2 millions tons of dung would be available every day. This dung can feed as many as 40 millions biogas plants which can be considered the ultimate potential for biogas technology. But even this high potential of biogas is based on animal dung only. However, all organic matter can technically be used to generate methane. If the scientific experiments that are going on in the country to develop alternative feedstocks such as water hyacinth, kitchen waste, and poultry waste become successful, potential for biogas generation could be virtually unlimited. It can be mentioned in this context that human waste is an excellent source of biogas which would enhance the potential substantially. With such high potential, which can be rooted to hitherto unemphasized applications of shaft power and electricity generation, biogas can make a significant contribution to the development of small industries and agriculture, and thus to the overall advancement of the rural areas. Biogas in Rashtrapati Bhavan Going green starts from the top, and in the capital the President's estate is taking the lead. Besides lighting an entire auditorium wing with solar power, the Rashtrapati Bhavan is using cow dung fueled biogas in its kitchen for the President's bodyguards. Petro crops plants. Petroleum and wood are chief energy resources from time immemorial, but they have been overused and not being replenished fast enough. This is cause for concern. There is a need for alternative energy providing sources that can be regenerated. Recent researches suggest that hydrocarbon producing plants can become alternative energy sources, which can be inexhaustible and ideal for liquid fuel. These plants called petro plants slash petrocrops can be grown on land which are unfit for agriculture and not covered with forests. Use of non-conventional energy source in India. Percent. Wind energy, 67.37. Waste to energy, 0.94. Small hydro. 13.1 Biomass 15.97 Solar photovoltaic 2.62 The most critical step in bee energy production is the selection of plant species that produce substances from which useful products can be extracted in an economically viable way. 
Many such promising species belong to the families Asclepiadaceae, Asturaceae, Anacardaceae Euphibici, Convolvulaceae, Caprifolaceae, Namurci, and Morrissey. Chitropococcus is an important petro plant. This biocrude can be obtained by tapping the latex, followed by coagulation, or by extraction of the dry biomass using a suitable solvent in cases where latex tapping is not possible. Biocrude is a complex mixture of liquids, terpenoids, triglycerides, phytosterols, waxes, and other modified isoprenoid compounds. It can be catalytically upgraded for use as liquid fuels. Hydrocracking of biocrude can convert it into several useful products like gasoline automobile fuel, gas oil and kerosene. 2. Geothermal energy. We live between two great sources of energy, the hot rocks beneath the surface of the earth and the sun in the sky. Our ancestors knew the value of geothermal energy. They bathed and cooked in hot springs. Today we have recognized that this resource has potential for much broader application. Geothermal energy is natural heat from the interior of the earth that can be used to generate electricity as well as to heat up buildings. The core of the earth is very hot and it is possible to make use of this geothermal energy. These are areas where there are volcanoes, hot springs, and geysers, and methane under the water in the oceans and seas. In some countries, such as in the USA water is pumped from underground hot water deposits and used for heating of houses. The utilization of geothermal energy for the production of electricity dates back to the early part of the 20th century. For 50 years the generation of electricity from geothermal energy was confined to Italy and interest in this technology was slow to spread elsewhere. In 1943 geothermal hot water was used for the first time in Iceland. At present in 21 countries the internal heat of Earth is used to produce electricity. However, at the global level, geothermal energy supplies less than 0.15% of the total energy supply. Geothermal resource falls into three major categories. IG pressurized zones, two hot rock zones and three hydrothermal convection zones. Of these three only the first is currently being exploited on a commercial basis. Geothermal energy in India. In India, Northwestern Himalayas and the western coast are considered geothermal areas. The Geological Survey of India has already identified more than 350 hot spring sites, which can be explored as areas to tap geothermal energy. Satellites like the IRS-1 have played an important role through infrared photographs of the ground, in locating geothermal areas. The Perga Valley in the Ladakh region has the most promising geothermal field. An experimental 1 kilowatt generator is already in operation in this area. It is being used mainly for poultry farming, mushroom cultivation, and pashmina wool processing, all of which need higher temperature. Geothermal manifestations are widespread in India in the form of 340 hot spring sites. Environmental impact of geothermal energy.
Geothermal energy can pose several environmental problems which includes on-site noise, emissions of gas and disturbance at drilling sites, disposal sites, roads and pipelines and power plants during its development. The steam contains hydrogen sulfide gas, which has the odor of rotten eggs, and cause air pollution. The minerals in the steam are also toxic to fish and they are corrosive to pipes and equipment, requiring constant maintenance. 3. Hydrogen Energy Many scientists believe that the fuel for the future is hydrogen gas. When hydrogen gas burns in the air or in fuel cells, it combines with oxygen gas to produce non-polluting water vapor and fuel cells directly convert hydrogen into electricity. Widespread use of Hydrogen as fuel would greatly reduce the problem of air pollution and danger of global warming because there will not be any CO2 emission. Hydrogen may be a clean source of energy, but getting large amount of pure hydrogen for commercial purposes is a problem because hydrogen is present in combination with other elements such as oxygen, carbon and nitrogen, thus hydrogen has to be produced from either water or organic compounds like methane etc. requiring large amounts of energy that is hydrogen as a fuel has to be produced using energy present. This is a very costly proposition. Producing hydrogen from algae in large-scale cultures will be a good idea. You have studied about the process of photosynthesis where green plant cells break down water molecule in the presence of sunlight to produce oxygen gas and hydrogen thus produced go to reduce CO2 to carbohydrate. Hydrogen produced via photosynthesis. CO2 will not emit carbon dioxide in future it may be possible to control photosynthesis so that green algae are able to produce hydrogen through the process of photosynthesis. Hydrogen is a pollution-free, cost-effective manner and if technologies such as fuel cells can be made cost-effective, then hydrogen has the potential to provide clean, alternative energy for diverse uses, including lighting, power, heating, cooling, transportation, and many more. Fuel cell technology. Fuel cells are highly efficient power generating systems that produce electricity by combining fuel hydrogen and oxygen in an electrochemical reaction or fuel cells are electrochemical devices that convert the chemical energy of a fuel directly and very efficiently into electricity DC and heat, thus doing away with combustion. Hydrogen fuel cells. Hydrogen and phosphoric acid are the most common type of fuel cells, although fuel cells that run on methanol, ethanol, and natural gas are also available. The most suitable Fuel for such cells is hydrogen or a mixture of compounds containing hydrogen. A fuel cell consists of an electrolyte sandwich between two electrodes. Oxygen passes over one electrode and hydrogen over the other, and they react electrochemically to generate electricity, water, and heat. Traditional methods generating electricity require combustion of fuel and the resultant heat is used to produce steam to run turbines which generate electricity. This method involves loss of heat and thus not very efficient. 
In chemical fuel cells on the other hand, chemical energy is converted directly into electricity, thus are more efficient and do not produce harmful gases. Both oxygen and hydrogen are added to the fuel cell in an electrolyte solution. The reactants remain separated from one another and, upon ionization, migrate through the electrolyte solution from one electrode to another. The flow of electrons from the negative to the positive electrode is diverted along its path into an electrical motor, supplying current to keep the motor running. In order to maintain this reaction, hydrogen and oxygen are added as needed. Waste products are only oxygen and water when hydrogen is used in a fuel cell. Using natural gas methane CH4 in fuel cells produces some pollutants, but the amount is only about 1% of what would be produced by burning fossil fuels in an internal combustion engine or a conventional power plant. Additionally, the efficiency of a fuel cell is largely independent of its size and energy output. For these reasons, fuel cells are well suited for automobiles, homes, and large-scale power plants. They can also be used to store energy to be used as needed. Fuel cells are in use particularly in Canada's balanced power systems in Canada and Germany's Dale Benz in Germany are world leaders in the application of fuel cell technology for meeting transportation needs. Such buses are already in operation in Vancouver in Canada and in Illinois in USA. Though rapid progress has been made, high Initial cost is still the biggest hurdle in the widespread commercialization of fuel cells. Fuel cell technology in India. Fuel cell systems are excellent options for small-scale decentralized power generation. Fuel cells can supply combined heat and power to buildings, hospitals, airports and military installations at remote locations. Fuel cells have efficiency levels up to 55% as compared to 35% of conventional power plants. The emission of greenhouse gases is significantly low CO2 as water vapor is being the only emission. Fuel cell systems are modular that is additional capacity can be added whenever required with relative ease and can be set up wherever power is required. Fuel cell technology and environment. Fuel cells are efficient and clean energy producer. Fuel cells have been used in space. Flights and being introduced in electric vehicles for reducing urban air pollution. Compared to vehicles powered by the internal combustion engine, fuel cell powered. Vehicles of very high energy conversion efficiency, almost double that of currently used engines and near zero pollution. Fuel cell power EVs electric vehicles score over battery operated EVs in terms of increased efficiency and easier and faster refueling, energy and economic development. Energy development is an integral part of economic development. Economically developed countries use more energy per unit of economic output and of much more per capita to energy consumption as compared to developing countries. Energy has been universally recognized as one of the most important inputs for economic growth and human development. Growth of economy will stand global competitiveness withstand.
only when it will depend on cost-effective or cheaper and environment-friendly energy. Sources Energy intensity is an indicator to show how efficiently energy is used in the economy. India's energy intensity is much higher than the emerging economies of other Asian countries. Energy sector in India has been receiving high priority in the planning process. Government of India has recognized the fact that the energy sector can become a major constraint or hurdle in the achievement of a high growth rate or gross domestic product GDP. It has therefore called for an increase in the reform process and adoption of an integrated energy policy.